Okay. I'm going to finish last Sunday's sermon, if that's all right with y'all. We started out talking about being the salt and the light and being the temple of the Lord. Your body is the temple of the Lord. No, you're not that your body is the temple of the Lord, he says. If any man, defi any man defiles that temple, him shall God destroy. That doesn't mean that you're not supposed to smoke cigarettes. It means people who come in bringing false doctrine and lying to the people and leading them astray. They are a blemish among you. But we're not, here to, we're not here to defile you. We're here to preach to you the truth. And we can't go wrong if we preach Jesus. Amen? Amen. So you are the temple of the Lord. All right. Number four on the list, Paul said he was an ambassador for Christ. The, the message is what we are, what God has made us to be. All of these things in this earth. You didn't know you were so many things, did you? But you are. In God's mind and in God's sight, it is what you are. Paul said of himself and those that were with him, we are ambassadors for Christ. We beseech you in Christ's stead. He said in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 3. We beseech you, or in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we beseech you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. So, the whole purpose of being saved, being born again, becoming a Christian, in your walk in life, is to be exactly the same thing. To be that ambassador, to be that one within, within whom the Spirit of God dwells. See, when the Spirit of God came into your life, He didn't come in there <clears throat> just for you to go about your own way. He came into our lives to guide us into the way He would have us go. So every day of your life, you live in such a manner as God would have you live. You're not your own anymore. You're bought with a price. You belong to Him. Uh, he's, the, he's the owner, and you're also, since his, you're, you're his dwelling place, Christ has taken up residence in your life, in your body. So therefore, <clears throat> as Paul was, you are, as he was, an ambassador, a representative of Jesus Christ. Every single one of you that believe Amen. has been saved, every one of you, you are representatives of Jesus it's not, just not only do you believe in Jesus, not only do you love Jesus, not only do you pray to the Lord, but you represent Him. And that's quite a, that's quite a thing, to represent someone. So look at your life. Look at how you live. Look at what you say to others. Look how you behave. Uh, because what you do and your actions are representative of him. Now, ain't that something? Do you ever think of yourself that way? Well, nobody's like Jesus, brother Bob. <laughs> you know, I've said that so many times, so have you. Nobody's like Jesus. You, are, you and I are representing yes. him. He was here 2,000 years ago in, in, in his physical body. He lived and walked among men just like we do. And now that he's gone into heaven, <clears throat> he's, he's no longer seen in the flesh, but we are. And he if he lives in you, then the world is to see him in all of us. God's great plan. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's God's great plan. That wasn't my idea. That was his idea. <laughs> It was his idea that you and I in this world would represent his life, his faith, his love, his compassion, his hope, his spirit, yes. his mind, his heart on, in this world. That's right. 
That's what you are as a Christian. You can't be nothing else. You can't represent somebody else. You represent Him. See? I said, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So take heed how you live, how you behave, how you act, what you do, where you go, who you meet. It's all important. God didn't call you to be a stuck-up or arrogant or proud. He called you to walk among sinners and the ungodly and those that are outcasts. He called you to, to, to uh, go to everybody, not turn anybody away. Now, He didn't call us to live in sin. We that are dead to sin no longer live in sin. Doesn't mean you don't sin as a Christian. All of us sin. But we're not living just to sin. We're living in His righteousness. Do you see that? We are living in Him. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. So then, all that He is, we are. All that He is, we are in Him. Not in ourselves. We can't do anything in ourselves. We have no power, strength, or ability in ourselves. We're like everybody else. Well, we're just sinners. But in Christ... We demonstrate and show forth the praises of God of all that he's done for us in life. And God has put it in our heart just like it was in the heart of Jesus. What kind of a person was Jesus? He was the kind of man who wanted to do nothing but to fulfill the will of his Father, to love his Father, love people, to demonstrate God's mighty power and love in the world and live selfless. He was, the most, he was the selfless person that ever lived. He was perfect in all of his ways. So <clears throat> God has called us to follow him. And because we, are not, we, we were not born like he was, uh, but we're born again in spirit. Because we were born after Adam, Jesus was not born of Adam. He was born of the Father. Do you believe that? He was born of a virgin. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her, and he came from heaven. He's from above. We are from beneath. But because we are from beneath of this world, because we are of the seed of Adam, there's a struggle going on, a war going on within us, a wrestling between the flesh and the spirit. You see that? That's why you have so much trouble uh, living for God as a Christian because your flesh always wants to have its way. Christ, on the other hand, was not born of Adam. He was born of God in the flesh. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. She conceived and brought forth a son. So he didn't have sin in him at all. There was no sin. He was not born of sin. Every one of us was born of sin, but Christ was not born of sin. He, over he was tempted in all points as we are of sin, but yet without sin. He had nothing inside of him that lusted after or desired anything that was sinful. It came against him and he was tempted to do it, but he totally overcome and resisted and went on, praise God, because he tasted of the honey and it was good. Amen. He chose to do the good and not and refuse the evil. When me and you tasted of evil, he said, that tastes pretty good. The devil says, come on now, you know it's good. Come on now, try it out. It's really good. But with Jesus, he just totally resisted all that and chose that which was good. And he was strengthened by the Lord and went on his way and did, did the mighty work of God. So in Christ, we are the same. We have the same advantage. We have the same power, the same ability, the same righteousness, the same spirit that's dwelling in us to uh, prompt us on, to carry us on, to, to strengthen us, to go on, to live in this world unto God and be that representative of Jesus Christ. Because the world doesn't need to see, doesn't see, need to see anything but Jesus. 
The world doesn't need to see anybody but Christ. Whatever we do, we need to do unto the glory of God. Whatever we say should be to the glory of God. You know, uh, we, whatever we do here in this church, it's for the glory of God. Whatever I do as a minister, I do for the glory of God. Uh, you know, we recorded that Christmas album, and everybody was asking over the past several years about that. So I said, well, now's a good time to do it. So we recorded It's beautiful. You're going to love it. It's just fantastic. But we had Maestro on there with the piano, and it was just, it's just a beautiful uh, recording. But I told him, I said, look, what I'm doing is for the glory of God. It's not for man. It's for the glory of God. I want the world to remember when they hear these songs, I want them to always remember Jesus Christ, that he came into the world. Amen. Amen. So everything we do, hallelujah, everything we do, when you clap your hands, when you jump up and down, when you sing a song, when you praise the Lord, everything you do is for the glory of God. It is to represent Jesus Christ. Some may say, well, I don't believe Jesus would act that way. How do you know? <laughs> Jesus doesn't act that way. He doesn't act wild and crazy. How do you know he didn't? <laughs> Were you there? <laughs> I believe Jesus was the best preacher that ever lived. Amen. Now you think of the, of the preacher that you love so much, anybody you, that you regard and have great respect for, a preacher, a minister, anybody that you think of, Jesus was the greatest preacher that ever walked this earth and the greatest teacher. He not only taught, he preached. There ain't no preacher got anything on Jesus. He was the best preacher, the best teacher that ever lived. The most passionate, the most truthful, the most anointed. Glory to God. And so, whenever we do this, these things in the church or in our lives, it's the, of the same spirit. We are partakers of his divine nature. Peter says, we are partakers of his divine nature. What is the nature of Christ to do? How is Jesus to do anything? Whatever his nature is, the nature of Christ, how he reacts, how he treats the, circum the, 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 the circumstance that we're in. However, however Jesus reacts to anything, what he does, what he said, what he thinks, how he's going to handle the situation. How do, what would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? The Bible says we are partakers of that divine nature. Amen. He becomes our wisdom. Jesus is our wisdom. Jesus is our know-how. <laughs> Jesus is our on-hands training experience. Jesus is everything in us. Whenever we reach forth our hands to lay hands on one another, to pray for each other, it is actually the hands of the Lord reaching forth and touching the, one another. Now, I'm not trying to say, now somebody's going to leave it now. Brother Bob believes we're all Jesus. He believes we're all Jesus. He's trying to, he's trying to create a false doctrine down there, a false teaching. You, you misunderstand. These are just my hands and your hands, just what we are in the flesh. But I'm talking about in spirit now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the apostles prayed in, in the book of Acts, they said, Lord, we pray, Lord, after, uh, you know, they had been set free from prison, Peter and John and all the disciples gathered together were praying, thanking God because they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And they began to pray, and they just said, oh, Lord, we thank you. We ask you, Lord, to stretch forth your hand and heal those that are sick. Stretch forth your hand, Lord. And as they prayed, the Holy Spirit shook the place where they were praying. And they all spoke with tongues and prophesied and preached the word of God with boldness. In other words, the spirit of Christ was upon them and in them. And whenever they reached forth their hands, 
And whenever they spoke forth their words, it was the word of Christ. It was the spirit of Christ in them reaching out. We are ambassadors. We are representatives of our king. You know, a king sits, sends ambassadors to represent him to other nations, to other kings, to other people. They go in his place and speak for him. Whatever his word is, whatever his wish is, they, they uh, relay that to the other people. That's what we are. We give, we relay, we, we tell others what our king wants, what he says, what he desires, what he wishes, and we say nothing else. Nothing else. If we said anything else other than what he said, we're liars. But if we say what he says, then we truly represent the Lord. So, before you speak, know that what you say is the Lord's word. As ministers of the gospel, I say to you, before you preach, make sure that what you preach is the word of Jesus. Because that's what the world needs to hear. They need to hear the word of the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. <laughs> Now we're going to move on to the next one as to what and who we are. Let me give you something to think about. What would the world be like without Trees. You ever think about that? What would this earth look like without trees? In the beginning, God created all things. He created the trees and the herbs and all the uh, things that grew in the earth, whose seed was in itself. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken. But the chicken had the egg in itself, which, which would duplicate itself. Same way with the trees. God created the tree first with the duplication in itself. Come on. Amen. That's how God started it. Yes, it is. What would the world be without trees? Trees play a very important role in the earth. They give off, what's that, what's that called, that process? What? Eh? Osmosis. They help. They help us breathe. They help create the oxygen in, in the air, in the in the atmosphere. And so trees have, have played a very very important role in the earth. Did you know God called us trees of righteousness? What would this world be without you and me? We've talked about being the salt of the earth, the light of the world. What would the world be without light? 
What would things be without salt? Save, save the savoriness of salt. What, what would the world be? Be cold, dark, tasteless, worthless. So what would the world be without you as being considered trees of righteousness? The planting of the Lord. Put your hands up there, say. Ain't my limbs pretty? <laughs> Hallelujah. Trees. You are planted by the Lord. Now, did, I, I want you to think about that just for, just for a second there. You're not a tumbleweed. Just blowing around, tossed to and fro, you know, you're rolling around. You look at some Christians, you think. But if you are in Christ, you have been planted. Start thinking of yourself as being planted. Isaiah 61 talks about, let me read it to you. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. To preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort. All that more. Remember, Jesus read these words in the synagogue in Nazareth where he grew up. He stopped right before the day of the vengeance of our God to appoint unto them, verse 3, that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Now what a thing to say. God looks at you as a tree. This word tree that he uses here in the Hebrew actually means a strong, it means a, a very strong tree. Yeah, an oak. As we think of a strong tree as an oak. That can withstand the elements of weather, of the earth, whose roots go deep the tree is strong. And that's what, the, that's what the word is used here in the Hebrew. God doesn't plant something that's flimsy. He plants 
a tree that will grow strong and endure. That they might be called trees, a strong tree. Of righteousness. A tree you can depend on. A tree that the wind's not going to blow it over. Now we're not talking about just any tree. We're talking about the tree the Lord plants. And the devil's going to try his best to blow you over. That's why God made you strong. The devil's going to try his best to, to, to uproot you and destroy you. That's why God made you strong. Remember the story of the three little pigs? <laughs> he'll huff and he'll puff. <laughs> The planting, I like that. Jesus said in the book of Luke, that he rebuked the Pharisees for regarding the doctrines of men, the commandments of men greater than the word of God. Yes, you teach for doctrine the commandments of men, he said. And then he said, all that my father has not planted, every plant that he has not planted shall be rooted up. There's a bunch of trees around here. And sometimes the world doesn't, may not see you for who you are. They can't see the trees for the forest. The world is full of trees. The world is full of all kinds of plants that's growing everywhere. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish between those that are good and those that are bad. Jesus said you will know them by the fruit they bear. A good tree brings forth good fruit and an evil tree brings forth evil fruit. And a good tree can't bring forth evil fruit. Nor can an evil tree bring forth good fruit. There's all kinds of things growing in this world today. There's a lot of people making a big uh, talk a lot and they confess a lot and profess a lot of things. But it's not just what you profess. It's what's growing out of you. It wasn't what, just what Jesus said. But I got news for you. Jesus was a little different than we are. Everything He said is everything He was. And everything he was is everything he said. If he talked about love, he was love. Hallelujah. If he talked about the spirit, he is spirit. Whatever Jesus talked about, he is. God is what He says. Can you grasp a hold of that meaning right, right there, that revelation? God is everything that He says. His Word and Himself 
are the same. Whatever God says, He can't say anything that's not of Him. He can't say nothing that isn't of Him and Him Himself. God doesn't talk about things on the outside of Himself when He's speaking of Himself. He's speaking of Himself. What His Word is is what He is. Glory to God. When we're in Christ, our words, our manner of living, the fruit that we bear, everything about us is Him. It's Him. It isn't ourselves, but it's Him. And they that are joined unto him are one with him. Amen. Whenever you speak the word of God, it's because you are in union with Christ. Whenever you live your life in such a manner pleasing to God, it's because you are in union with Christ. Whenever you love one another, whenever you encourage and believe with one another, whenever you come together in the same mind, in the same accord, hallelujah, it's because you are in union with the Savior. You can't, you, my God, we can't lose when we get in union with Jesus. If we get in tune with Jesus, we can't lose. The church can't lose if we get in tune with Jesus. My God, you can't lose in your life if you're walking with Jesus. And the devil cannot defeat you. Nothing can destroy you. It doesn't matter how the devil beats on. They beat on Jesus. Did the devil defeat Jesus? I don't think so. Hallelujah. You see, it's the nature of the thing. You can beat a tree to death, it's still going to be what it is. Huh? It's still going to be the same tree. Because it's the nature of the tree. God puts within us a new life. The life of hope. Certainty, strength, ability. We're not discouraged. We're encouraged. We're not going down in the world. He's lifted us up into the heavenlies. We're not walking around, muddling around in the things of this world. Our minds are not cluttered with unbelief and ungodliness and sinfulness and rebellion and doubt and fear. That's the way the world lives. We have within us that seed, that life. My God, we have within us something that's born in us. Jesus said, 
In this world, you will have tribulation. Yes. As long as you're on this earth, the devil's going to be running and after you and chasing you and fighting you and doing everything he can to destroy you. But be of good cheer. <laughs> Hallelujah! Be of good cheer, Jesus said. Lord, how can I be so happy when everything's falling down around me? Jesus said, be of good cheer, man. Look up and rejoice because I have overcome the world. I've done it for you. You don't have to worry about it. I've overcome that devil. He can't do nothing to you. I mean, Brother Bob, you sure are loud. I'm fat, too. Yeah, I see my limbs are shaking, man. They're shaking. That's why us Pentecostals shake so much in church. When the wind starts blowing, we start shaking. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need the wind blowing through our limbs. Hallelujah. We need the Spirit of the Lord to shake us up. Praise God. Be of good cheer. Be a happy tree. After all, you got something growing in you that they ain't got growing in them. There's something going on inside you that they possibly couldn't have in them because my Father planted you where you are. My Father did for you what no other can do. Whew. Well, that's good preaching. Thank you, Lord. I see what you mean now, Lord. I want to see you when you come to church and I say, man, I'm feeling it. What are you feeling? I'm a tree of righteousness. <laughs> what kind of fruit do you grow? unloved you take off all fruit okay? That's right. have some love that's right. find somebody that's being stubborn <laughs> rebellious have some mercy You find somebody that's struggling along and they need help. Have some hope and faith. That's the kind of fruit you're bearing. Look at the situation from God's standpoint. After all, you're His planting. You are the planting of the Lord. He planted you to grow in that way. To be different than all the rest. That's right. Hallelujah. Because you have in you exactly what they need. If you come to church and you find your brother or sister down and out, they have something that you have. They need it. They need something that you have inside you. 
Don't wither up and die just because everybody else wants to wither up and die. They need help. They need hope. Be the flourishing one. Be the producing one. Be the one that gives. Be the one, praise God. Pick that apple off and rub it real good and get it real good and shine and say, here, have a, have, a, have a bite, praise God. God wants your gifts to be bright and shiny. And sweet and juicy. Yes, That's a good one. I don't want some dried out faith. I want some juicy faith, man. I don't want no dried out love. Give me some juicy love, man. It's rich. And running, hallelujah. Take a bite of it, let it drip down your cheek, praise God. It's like walking through the garden and picking a tomato, taking a bite. And all them seeds dripping down your mouth. Nice, juicy. You know what your soul is hungry for. You know what you need. You know what the problem is. So why is shirt? Why shy away from that that is offered to you? Sometimes I think the world can't stand Christians because they look so good. Sometimes I think the world shuns Christians because they can't stand how well you grow or how good you are. I would rather you be dull and gloomy and dark like they are. God called us out of the world. When God planted his trees, they are the best. They are the best. What God does in you is the very best thing that could happen to you. Amen. And he did it because everybody around you needs it. Amen. Yes. When God sent Jesus this world, what do you think he sent? And not anybody in heaven and earth could have done and been what Jesus was. That's right. Why did he send him? Because you and I needed him. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on now. We thought we were doing all right, huh? The whole world thinks you know, oh, okay. Everything's wonderful. I don't need anything. Everything's going great. Life is beautiful. Until you see Jesus. And you see how dull and unfulfilled and dark. Your world really is. Amen. Because he outshines right. 
all the glitter and glamour of this world. When Jesus steps into the room, he blinds you with his light. When Jesus comes in, everything else melts away. When it's just you and him, listen to me. When you're on your knees praying at night or wherever you are praying, it doesn't matter where you are. When you're alone with God and Jesus is on the scene, everything else pales in comparison to him. Huh? Oh yeah. When you got saved, that's what happened. Do you remember when the Lord saved you? I remember when the Lord saved me. And man, it's the brightest, glorious thing. And I, it was so wonderful to me that when I looked around in the world, I couldn't see anything but glory. I see the glory of God. The sky looked bluer. I loved everybody. I didn't see anybody I hated. I didn't see anybody anywhere that was bad. I just saw the goodness of God. I just, he just opened my eyes and flooded my heart and flooded my mind and flooded my soul and flooded my world. Hallelujah. And I've come to find out that same spirit, that same glory dwells in us. Think of yourself that way. You are the planting of the Lord. You are the representative of himself. Your pretty branches. Your juicy fruit. Uh. You ever go to church and lick your lips? It gets kind of juicy around here sometimes. <laughs> it's the love of God. It's the spirit of Christ. It makes us forget. When we walk in the door and see each other and we hug each other and talk to each other and we come together in fellowship, it makes us forget about what we left behind. Huh? It does, don't it? It do, don't it? It do, it do. Somebody say it do. It do. It sure enough do. And it makes us forget. And sometimes when it happens to us, we look and say, oh, yeah, I remember this. This is good. <laughs> I done forgot. That's, that's, that's well, yeah, that's, that's good. I, I forgot about it. Yeah, the devil makes you forget it all the time. He wants you to forget it. He wants us to get all caught up in a whirlwind. Calm down. Calm down. Stand there. Stand there and grow. And when you've done all you can do to stand, stand there for. When the devil's come at you from all directions, stand there for. 
You are the planning of the Lord. Stand with me, everybody. Jesus said of himself, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. He said of himself, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. You are the branches. We have been planted together, Paul says, with Christ. Amen. Planted yes. and risen with Him. Doesn't that say something to you? I know he's talking about baptism there in water, coming out, dying, coming back a lot to life. We, we've been crucified with Christ. We were buried with him. And when we were raised up, we were raised to newness of life. But doesn't that say the same thing of a tree? We were planted and we rose. Newness of life. The branches of the Lord, trees of righteousness. We are all connected to the vine. We're all connected to the tree of life. We're all partakers of that divine nature. Glory to God. Next time you look at yourself in the mirror or you take a look at your arms or your hands, think of yourself as being, this is my branch. And I want to give what God has planted in me. I want to give freely. I want it to bear in me. I want it to bring forth in me all those good things that God intended. He never planted, he never planted a tree without intending for it to bring forth. He never, intended, he never planted a garden without intending it for to bring forth what he, what, he put, what he planted. He said, I planted that tree, and I've been looking for fruit on it all these years. I'm going to cut it down. <laughs> the servant said, oh, master, let us dig about it and dung it, fertilize it real good one more time, and we'll see if it does any good. Is the Lord been digging around you this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise God! Say somebody say, Lord, Lord. will you please Amen. dig around my roots? Around my roots. Lord, Lord, will you fertilize me? <laughs> because I want to grow. I want to bring forth those things that please you in my life. I want to be all that you want me to be and more. Herein, Jesus said, is my Father glorified that you bring forth much fruit. Hallelujah. Let's get busy. Let's get busy. Let's get busy growing and giving and doing. Yes, amen. How many believe we're living in the last days? Amen. If we're living in the last days, it's high time yep. to get busy. Amen. Right. Ain't no time for slacking off right. and drying up and blowing away right. or withering away. Amen. Say, Lord, please dig around my roots and get me going here, will you please? And after a while, you're going to say, hmm, I feel that. Thank you, Lord. I 
healthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for moving me. Thank you, Lord, for caring about me. He said, my father is the husbandman. He will see to it. And every branch in you that doesn't bring forth fruit, he's going to cut it off. Every branch that's not doing any good, all those little sucker branches, you know, you see growing on things. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of those. All I want to see on there are good branches bringing forth good, juicy fruit. All the rest of them are meaningless. It's not necessary. Get shed of it. If you don't, the Lord's going to get shed of it. He's going to get it off of you. Oh, Lord. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes we don't like to be clipped. But the Lord's going to clip us. We need to be clipped. Clean us up, Lord. <laughs> clean me up, Lord. If I'm doing something wrong, clean me up, Lord. Get rid of that thing in my life. You're doing something you know you ought not to do. You're a Christian. You love God, but you're doing things you know you shouldn't do. The Lord's going to clean you up. You are the planning of the Lord. And because you're in this world, he planted you in this world. The world wants to attach itself to you. And he knew that from the beginning. But that's why he's the husbandman. I can't do it. Nobody can clean you up, but God can. Amen. I can tell you the truth, but only God can clean you up. Right. It's like they're saying about catching fish. We'll catch the fish and God will clean them. Amen. Right. Yeah. God will clean you. Jesus told his disciples, you are clean through the word that I've spoken to you. Right. Listen to his word this morning, saints. Abide in his word. Jesus said, if you abide in me as the branch abides in the vine, you'll bring forth much fruit. So let us abide. Let us abide in him, his word in us. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you so much. You are speaking to your people. You are speaking to those to whom you have called we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are kings and priests unto our God. We have been planted by the Lord. We are trees of righteousness. We are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Hallelujah. Help us, Father, to more than ever be sincere to be serious keep us busy Father let our light shine let the glory of the Lord be seen in us not only in the world but among our own loved ones and family let us be that light Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Yes, now, you might not be the brightest light bulb in the, in the house, <laughs> but that's all right. Let that light shine. Right. Bring forth that fruit unto God. Do your best for him. He's given you the ability and the power and the will. Is God working in you both to will? Come on now. Somebody says both to will, both to will. And, to do and to do of his good pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. God bless you. Anybody need prayer? Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Your niece? Yeah, we talked about last week. Oh, yeah.
Does she know the Lord? Okay. Amen. Lord, we remember these families, everyone's family here this morning, Lord, whose loved ones are sick or in the hospital or something has, some, the circumstances, Lord, that they're in. You know all about it, Father. We just lift them all up before you. The families of all those that are hurt. Lord, just keep them safe. Keep their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You can heal their bodies and give them a miracle, Father, but if you take them on, keep their hearts and minds in Christ. In Jesus' name. Save the lost. Heal the sick. Deliver the oppressed. Set the captives free. That they may be the trees of righteousness. Planting of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. I love you. God loves you. Amen. Yes. May the peace of God rest upon you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Love one another. God bless. Come back and be with us. Amen. Amen.